Today, North America's newest metro system opened. Well, not really, because it's in Hawaii. Which, if I didn't make this disclaimer, and possibly even though I'm going to make this disclaimer, many commenters will probably tell me doesn't count because it's not part of continental North America. But come on, Hawaii is a US state and it has a very interesting new metro system. And as you might imagine, it has quite the story of both crazy problems and incredible potential. And there are even potentially some Canadian connections? Let's dive in and talk about heart. I mean, Skyline. It's a cool name. Hey, I'm Reese, and this is RM Transit. If you like transit and transit videos, consider subscribing and turning on all notifications so you never miss a video. Before we get into the ups and downs of this huge project, what is HART? Well, HART, despite sounding a lot like BART, as in the Bay Area Rapid Transit, stands for Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transit, a government body tasked with delivering a rail system that serves the city of Honolulu, which is the capital of Hawaii on the island of Oahu. That rail system has often been historically referred to by many people as HART, but it actually got a new name for the system's opening, which is Skyline. Which I actually think is pretty cool. Uh, it harkens to the Vancouver Skytrain, which was a major influence on the project, which is a bit of a hybrid metro regional train service for the greater Honolulu area. Now, the project is being built in a number of phases, going from west to east, starting by serving suburban areas before working its way to Pearl Harbor, the airport, and the city center. With the airport in Pearl Harbor in an under construction phase two, the city center in phase three, and Ala Moana and other areas of Honolulu in future phases. Now, to be perfectly clear, this project has had a lot of problems, and they're not all behind us. The project was really expensive, costing over $300 million per kilometer, according to the Transit Cost Project. Despite it being fairly bare bones for a metro system, by comparison, the project costs several times more than Vancouver's Evergreen Skytrain extension, a project which goes through denser areas and has a huge tunnel on it. At the same time, given the system started construction in 2011, it will have taken 12 years to get it done, which maybe would be understandable for a tunnel going under mountains in Europe, but for an entirely elevated or above ground metro system that often goes through empty fields, it's kind of crazy. If you're wondering, as you might expect, there were a lot of sources of delay, though one of the major ones that happened towards the end of the project were problems happening with the interface between the train wheels and the rails. And that highlights the next major issue. The current route from Aloha Stadium to East Kapolei has very little around a lot of it. The western stations in particular are surrounded by basically nothing. One of the stations is literally in the middle of a field. Now, to be fair, they are developing around the stations. In fact, Google Maps even has map lines for where roads will be in the future. But from what I can tell, the development isn't going to be super high density, which it should be next to a metro. And again, given the extreme simplicity of this section of construction, it is incredible how expensive this project still has been. Now, to be fair, traveling east along the line, it does travel through much more developed neighborhoods, but they're still quite suburban. But the weird thing is that right now, essentially a bunch of suburban and in some cases rural areas of Honolulu have a full metro service, while the densest parts of the city have nothing to show for themselves. Honolulu does have incredible density, but it's basically all east of the airport, and it's just strange to me that so much of the line is west of the airport, with only a short segment of it possibly going to connect to some of the densest areas of the island in the future. It seems pretty obvious to me that the project should have started at the airport and worked its way east. Yes, you would have needed to find land for a yard, but there's a lot of industrial space around the airport and the various harbors. And this would have created a very logical project, with high capacity metro service from the airport to the densest parts of Honolulu, filled with high rise towers and major tourist sites. Once the line started gaining ridership and the operator was comfortable, then you could start extending it west into new suburbs, which wouldn't drive the line's ridership but would add useful connections. Unfortunately, some of the issues with the service and infrastructure are also pretty glaring. For one, the stations have fare gates, but no escalators. Now, not having escalators would be reasonable for a minor European suburban rail station, but for what is effectively a full-scale metro, it's crazy, especially given so much of the line is elevated high above street level. That's doubly crazy because it sort of seems like a cost-cutting measure, but this wasn't an inexpensive project, so those two things don't really align. 
At the same time, at least for the foreseeable future, service ends at 7 p.m., which is crazy for a metro system. I believe plans are to extend the service to run later, and this is because of some technical issues, but it just feels wrong to open a rapid transit service that doesn't run past 7 p.m. It's just sending strange messages about who and what trips are meant to be using this service. But really, in my personal opinion, the biggest problem of all is one that doesn't even face Honolulu. It faces the U.S. as a whole. You see, an automated metro system which can run above wide suburban streets is incredibly well suited for a country like the US which has lots of wide suburban streets and struggles to recruit drivers for its metro systems. Assuming that more US transit agencies decide that operating very high frequencies is something that they should do, that is. This technology has the potential to be hugely transformative for the US, but if the project in Honolulu has tons of problems, which it already has, it risks poisoning the well for the future. That's despite the fact that the problems with the project have really had nothing to do with what type of trains were running. Fortunately, Honolulu's project isn't all bad. It's got a lot to like about it. Indeed, the project is the first automated metro in the US that lets you stand up at the front and pretend you're driving. And with incredible views of the island from all angles when you're in the train, I wouldn't be surprised if the train becomes a bit of a tourist attraction of its own. Now, speaking about the trains themselves, they were manufactured by Hitachi, and they're from its driverless metro family, which are also used in cities in Italy, as well as Copenhagen, and in Toronto in the future. They're super nice, and they're also fully walkthrough, which means Honolulu might be the first major urban subway system in the US to have fully walkthrough trains. You can let me know if I'm wrong in the comments down below, but if so, it is crazy that Honolulu beat New York City, Chicago, and San Francisco to this. Since the project's elevated above ground, it's yet another good example of the fact that elevated metro projects don't need to look like the Chicago L in 2023. So often when an elevated metro project is proposed in North America, I hear people saying, that's just like Chicago, right? When it really isn't. And again, this will just be a great example for people to point to and say, hey, Honolulu did it. At the stations, while they are lacking in the escalator department, at least they have Wi-Fi? And more interestingly, there are mid-height platform gates. And this is going to be the first major deployment of them anywhere in North America. And yes, Honolulu, North America, you, you get what I'm saying. From the automated trains to the platform gates, this is a very nice system. So while Honolulu's metro might not go everywhere it should, at least it's very modern. And in the long term, when the line is extended, it's going to be crazy useful connecting many of the key destinations that locals and visitors alike want to go to with fast and frequent train service. That is way more relaxing than getting stuck in bumper to bumper traffic on a highway. Now service will start operating every 10 minutes, which isn't amazing for a metro, but given that LA doesn't even run its metro lines that frequently is actually pretty good and maybe a sign that automated metro is having its intended effect. And speaking of those stations that currently aren't surrounded by much, well, that's something advocates can fix if they push for higher density development directly integrated into the stations. In that case, they could go from white elephants to leading examples of transit-oriented development in the United States. I also don't want to understate the value of this project for tourism. Hawaii is a major destination for tourists from around the world, but in particular from Japan. And I can only imagine that folks coming off a plane from Japan might feel pretty comfortable getting on a train to head to their final destination in Honolulu. At the same time, folks from the US mainland can get on Skyline, see what a great system it is, and push their local representatives to do something similar in their own cities. And hey, if people didn't have enough reasons to travel to Hawaii, maybe some rail fans will come and visit just to try out Skyline, which I may actually do. It is a really cool system. Ultimately, what's kind of cool is that Oahu isn't that big. And with extensions east and west, Skyline stations will be within a walking, biking, or bus riding distance from most residents of Oahu, which in and of itself is a huge part of the state's population. With frequent bus connections traveling north and south from various train stations, the entire island could be really well covered by frequent rapid transit, while also making the system incredibly heavily used. That an island with less than a million inhabitants was able to build a full automated metro system is basically the impressive US equivalent of Kitchener-Waterloo in Canada, a town of around 500,000 people building itself a tram system. Now, should the project be successful, and given its frequent trains and incredible views, I imagine it eventually will be, especially as it's extended, then I think people will pretty quickly forget a lot of the problems that the project had when it was being constructed, as it becomes a key part of moving around Honolulu, slashing traffic, and promoting more sustainable travel options. 
As long as Heart can figure out how to build extensions cost effectively, it could someday be one of the biggest American transit success stories of the 21st century. And given it's the first major urban rail system in the United States to use automated trains and platform gates, I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Thanks for watching.